He's not going to tell you what he believes. He's going to show you. I guess you can say what you see is what you get. If, if God speaks to Fred about doing something, I was raised rough. He's going to do it whether there's five people involved or 5,000 people involved. I cause problems, you know. He loves people, all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds. I grew up and my world was very white. There was then a lot of ignorance, prejudice, and biases. Fred has forever changed that for my brother. I used to give him a hard time, man. I used to give Minister Fred H-E-L-L. He led worship at our church several times, and so he and I just developed a relationship from there. My problem is that my generation was boxed into a certain way of communicating. What we wanted young people to be was what we were 30 years ago. And we tried to, get, we tried to mold them into yesterday's models. Guess what? It wasn't working. And so since they wouldn't do what we asked them to do, the way we asked them to do, and they weren't listening to us, we tend to either pray for them or write them off. Guys who don't quite fit in, a lot of times people will dismiss it because we have this form of religion that takes us to places that excludes other people. Fred came to my church, Pastor Jones, I'd like to use your church. We want to do a certain event. Now, Pastor Jones, we're going to have some rock music. We're going to do a hip hop subject. You know about rap music, do you, Pastor Jones? No, Fred, I don't know about rap music. But Pastor Jones, this is gospel rap. Gospel rap, George? Uh, tell me, uh, Fred, what's gospel and rapping? What do they have in common? Well, because I believed in Fred. I said, okay, Lord, <laughs> I believe you got, you got an anointing on Fred. I know my members believe in me. We're going to close our eyes, hold our nose, and hope they won't kill us when these kids come and we do gospel rap. The church is packed. Young people I would never be able to reach, black and white, showed up. And in his rap, he told them things that they would never listen if I said it. I was amazed. You kind of noticed Fred, you can't miss him. And he's the Pied Piper, the kids kind of flocked around him and they wore orange suits and, and lime green suits with lime green shoes to match. And that didn't shock me because I'm from Memphis. I was fired up, bro. I had, I was like, I was like my favorite. I, I would not wear a tie because I thought that was like too old school. And that's why I had so much trouble. They was like, you can't be pastoring without a tie. Watch me. <laughs> Watch your boy. Watch your boy. And so um, I stayed relevant by following, watching what was going on. And I said, Lord, help me to create a legacy. He was real about what he believed. And he knew why God had him here. And I said, it was never to be sanctioned by a church. This is for them. Fred is reaching a part of the community that a lot of people are not really paying attention to in ministry. He's going after the youth, trying to get them to uh, look for better expectations of themselves. He didn't quit. He don't, he, he don't give up on nobody. He not, not nobody. It has always been difficult, and the devil has always just slung darts and been really hard trying to stop this because he's dealing with kids. And when you're dealing with kids' lives and you're trying to change their lives and turn them around, stop them and turn them around, you know, out of this lifestyle that they have and they don't see a way out, and then their lives shift and there's something that's new and different they are me, but they haven't recovered or found their purpose. I found mine in a dorm room. <laughs> and I experienced it when I was on the block in Mason Court when it had two exits. When cats roll in, drop the dope off, broad daylight, be like, what? But Terrace. Metal heels, roll up, crack house, pimp house, church house. But I realized I was them. But I'm recovered. Or oh, I have a purpose to live 
and I know Jesus loves me so much, that ain't worth it. So I was like, every time I saw someone, I saw that could have been me if someone didn't tell me. So he didn't say, do as I say, because I read a book. And in my book, they say, go one, two, three. He says, let me show you what happened to me. Let me walk you through into your future. He was homeless. Literally, from Hurricane Katrina had just destroyed everything. God blew him this way. <laughs> I said, he literally blew him to North Alabama with nothing, zero. And he restarted his ministry in a whole new direction. And in the midst of that, when he had nothing, he would give his last bit to others. He's gonna be one of those people, when you start talking about Huntsville legends and people who have made an imprint on the community, it's definitely Fred. We don't need any more analysis of yesterday. We need somebody who can look at darkness and say, here's a flashlight, and say, we can make a difference and make tomorrow much brighter. Fred has that ability to see into the future and say, ha ha, things are not getting worse. Things are getting better. And he continues to do the impossible over and over and over again. If I could just get me four or five more Freds, I could change the world.